Today we are in the dining room of Logan Kutzer looking at a work housed in the Library of Congress. This series of photographs by Edward Muybridge titled The Horse in Motion shows, unsurprisingly, several images of a galloping horse. At this point in time and art, a question posed itself. Is there any point in a horse's stride where all four of a horse's legs come off of the ground at the same time? Known as unsupported transit, artists and horse experts at the time were under the impression that a horse's legs stretch out off the ground in the front and back. Under this assumption, horses were portrayed in art using the flying gallop, showing the animals in the middle of a majestic leaf to gracefully convey that the horse is in motion. The flying gallop was very prevalent in visual culture and in paintings such as Theodore Gerichold's Derby at Epsom all the way up until the 1870s, but it was only used based on theoretical evidence. They really didn't know what a horse running looked like. At the time, the speed of a horse's movement surpassed the sensitivity of the naked eye, and photography's shutter speeds simply were not fast enough to capture the split second in question. After all, it had only been about three decades since cameras were invented. Leland Stanford, a prominent politician, businessman, and racehorse breeder and aficionado, wanted to prove this theory of unsupported transit, but he didn't have the means, saying, I have for a long time entertained the opinion that the accepted theory of the relative positions of the feet of horses in rapid motion was erroneous. I also believe that the camera could be utilized to demonstrate that fact, and by instantaneous pictures, show the actual position of the limbs at each instant of the stride. So he called on photographer Edward Moybridge, born as Edward James Muggeridge, who he believed would be capable of using the camera to determine whether all four feet of a horse are off the ground at any point in mid-gallop. Moybridge is quite the character, but Stanford had worked with the man before when photographing his film in California. When Stanford called on Moybridge again, he was wandering in the west in a little one-horse carriage in dark room to photograph the most majestic scenes he could find in the wild, including his famous scene of a panoramic shot of Yosemite Valley. He additionally had a small intermission in his work following his shooting and killing of his wife's lover, Harry Larkins, in 1874. His wife was 20 years younger than him. While he was indeed put in jail, he was acquitted during his murder trial on the grounds of justifiable homicide. He blamed the, a head injury sustained in a stagecoach accident for his erratic behavior. However, the head injury in question actually occurred in 1860, 14 years prior. Moving on out of jail, Moybridge quickly saw success. Less than one year after his release, he successfully depicted a 4 by 3 white grid of silhouetted horses, Sally Gardner. The horse in motion, Sally Gardner, owned by Leland Stanford, running at a 140 gait over the Palo Alto track, 19th June, 1878. The images were made possible by the horse, Sally Gardner, running 40 miles per hour past 12 consecutive cameras with stereoscopic lenses, setting off tripwires while in set intervals and releasing camera shutters for just one one thousandth of a second. These photographs proved Sanford's hypothesis of unsupported transit and further confirmed that there is a moment in time when all four hooves are off the ground at the same time. But it wasn't even remotely close to the flying gallop scene in art. The horse in motion proved that the hooves do, do indeed rise off the ground, but not spread out in the body as seen in the flying gallop. Instead, all hooves are seen off the ground in an awkward mid-stride, with the legs in various positions in preparation to touch back onto the ground. This was groundbreaking since horses were seen as elegant and graceful creatures with few flaws. The messy clumping of legs under the horse's torso was a vast contrast to the convention of horses seen in art that dates back to prehistoric times. Early examples of the flying gallop can even be seen in cave paintings from thousands of years before Muybridge's revelation, like in the Hall of Bulls in Lassau, France. The ability to capture a precise moment in time was created in the process of photographing the horse and was a massive innovation to the film world gave a birth to a new style of portraying horses in art and proved the flying gallop to be inaccurate and not representative of a true horse in motion, allowing horses to be depicted more realistically. The 12-frame composition with the title of the work shows a narrative of a horse in the middle of the act of running, with gaps of half a second duration in between each scene. These gaps are meant to imply time unseen to the viewer to give the illusion time is pausing in between the different positions between each frame. The grid is read in a linear fashion, starting on the top left to read to bottom right, to indicate natural progression through the grid and give 12 slightly different images to illustrate progression through motion. The last image, however, is of the horse standing still. While this image is not accurate of the completion of the horse's stride, as it is physically impossible for a horse to come to an abrupt stop while running 45 to 50 miles per hour, it was included for a strategic purpose. The final image of the horse standing still is an indication of the completion of the act of running and provides a temporal contemplation of the physical act of the run. The immense accuracy able to be achieved astounded the people of the 19th century and viewers trusted the photographs over their own eyes. The instantaneous nature of the photo was the most influential part of it as it was able to capture a precise moment in time which was impossible prior.
Its specific use for scientific purposes further increases credibility and help the art of photography to be established as a certified medium used to capture a specific moment in time. Some interestingly rejected Muybridge's findings, but didn't claim that the photos were inaccurate, and instead debated that images of the flying gallop were superior to the awkward clumpiness seen in the horse in motion. The French sculptor Auguste Rodin even said, It is the artist who is truthful, and it is the photograph that lies, for in reality, time does not stop. This opposition was further challenged due to Muybridge's later invention, the zoopraxiscope. A disk of sequential images are hand-cranked to allow the repetition of pictures, giving the illusion of the state of running as the horse's strides are repeated over and over in the eye of the viewer. This invention was further revolutionary in the film world and served as a precursor to the invention of cinema. When cranked at a speed of 20 frames per second or more, the uninterrupted panel of images can be perceived more like a video than a series of photos, and is where the concept of a GIF came from. Weybridge's discovery allowed him to explore all possible moments in a state of motion and went on to produce over 100,000 images of animals and humans. The human body is a complex collection of tissues and organs, and prior to the zoopraxiscope, was a question mark in the scientific community on how the muscles interact with each other during the process of motion. To document the human body in motion, Moybridge photographed entirely nude models in some form of action, such as hammering a nail, hitting a tennis ball, ballet, and other forms of sports or activities. To illustrate his dedication, he included a sequence of himself swinging a miner's pick. Naked, because why not? He published a collection of his findings in 1887 in the form of a massive portfolio comprising 20,000 photographs titled Animal Locomotion, an Electrophotographic Investigation of Consecutive Phases of Animal Movement. His findings contributed significantly to the study of biomechanics in the scientific community. He laid the groundwork for much of motion study today. It was also the introduction of the recording of the passage of time through chronophotography, which jump-started the development of motion pictures and cinemas today. Yes, such as Jordan Peele's 22 sci-fi horror waste and thriller mystery, Nope. Did you know that the very first assembly of photographs in sequential order to create a motion picture was a two-second clip of a black man on a horse? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Look it up. Now, I know you guys know Edward Moorbridge, the grandfather of motion pictures, who took the pictures that created that clip. But does anybody know the name of the black jockey that rode the horse? No. Nope. 